live from Stanford University, it's theCUBE, covering Global Women in Data Science Conference. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Women in Data Science fourth annual global conference. I'm Lisa Martin here at the Arriaga Alumni Center at Stanford, joined by a WIDS speaker and Stanford alum, Madeline Udell. You are now an assistant professor at Cornell University. Madeline, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it's great to be here. So you're, this is your first WIDS. This is my first But you WIDS. were at Stanford a few years ago when the WIDS movement mm -hmm. began. So tell us a little bit about what you do at Cornell, mm -hmm. the research that you do, the classes that you teach, and the people, men and women, that you work with. Sure, so uh, at Cornell, I'm uh, uh, studying optimization and machine learning. I'm really interested in understanding low dimensional structure in large messy data sets so that we can figure out uh, ways of looking at the data set that make them seem cleaner and smaller and easier to work with. Uh, I teach a bunch of classes related to these topics, um, PhD classes on optimization and on uh, optimization for machine learning, but one that I'm really excited about is an undergrad class I teach called uh, Learning with Big Messy Data. Uh, that introduces undergraduates to what messy data sets look like, which they often don't see in their undergraduate curriculum, and ways to, ways to uh, uh, wrangle them into the kinds of forms that they could use uh, with other tools that they have learned about uh, as undergraduates. You say messy, big messy data yes. with a big smile on your face. Yes. <laughs> so this is something that might be introduced mm -hmm. to these students as mm -hmm. they enter their PhD program. Mm -hmm. um, define messy data oftentimes, and some applications of it. Oftentimes people only learn about big messy data when they go to industry and that's actually uh, uh, how I understood what these kinds of data sets looked like. Um, I, uh, I took a break from my PhD while my advisor was on sabbatical, and I scampered off to the Obama 2012 campaign. And on the campaign, they had these horrible data sets. They had you know, hundreds of millions of rows, one for every voter in the United States, and maybe tens of thousands of columns about things that we knew about those voters. And they were weird kinds of things, right? They were things like um, uh, gender, which in this data set was Boolean, state, which took one of 50 values, uh, approximate education level, approximate income, whether or not they had voted in each of the last elections. And I looked at this and I was like, I don't know what to do, right? These are not numbers. Right? They're Booleans, they're categoricals, they're ordinals, and a bunch of the data was missing. So there were many people for which we didn't know uh, their level of education, or we didn't know their approximate income, or we didn't know whether or not they had voted in the last elections. Okay? So with this kind of horrible data set, how do you do like basic things? Like how do you cluster? How do you, um, how do you even visualize this kind of data set? Um, so I came back to my PhD thinking, I want to figure out how this works. I want to figure out the right way of approaching this data set. Because a lot of people will just sort of hack it. And I wanted to understand, like, what's really going on here? Uh, what's the right model to think about this stuff? So that really was quite influential in the rest of your PhD and what you're doing now. Because you found this interesting, but also tangible in a way, right? Especially mm -hmm. working with a political campaign. That's right. That's right. So, um, I mean, a bunch of, you know, I'm both interested in the applications and I'm interested in the math. So I like, to, I like to be able to come back to you know, Stanford at the time, we're now at Cornell, and really think about what the mathematical structure is of these data sets, um, what are good models for, for what the sort of underlying latent spaces look like. Um, but then I also try to take it back to uh, people in industry, uh, take it back to political campaigns, but uh, uh, you know, here, you know, here at WIDS, I'm really excited to tell people about uh, the kinds of mathematics that can help you deal with this kind of data set more easily. Because you have a talk this afternoon called Filling in yep. Missing Data with Low Ranked models. That's right. One of the things before we get into that that I'd love to kind of um, unpack with you is looking at taking the the campaign, um, mm -hmm. Obama 2012 campaign, um, messy data as an example mm -hmm. of something that is interesting. There's a lot of science and mathematics behind it, but there's mm -hmm. also other skills I'd love to get your perspective mm -hmm. on, and that's creativity, that's um, empathy, mm -hmm. it's being able to clearly understand and communicate right. to your audience. Where do those other skills factor into what you do as a professor and also yeah. the curriculum that you're teaching? Sure, I think they're incredibly important. Uh, if, you want, if you want your technical work to have an impact, you need to be able to communicate it to other people. You need to make, number one, make sure you're working on the right problems, which means talking with people to figure out what the right problems are. Uh, and this is one aspect that I consider really fundamental to my career is going around talking to people in industry about what problems they're facing that they don't know how to solve, right? 
And then you go back to your uh, university, you squirrel away and try to figure it out. Um, oftentimes, I can't figure it out on my own, so I need to put together a team. I need to pull in other people from other disciplines who have the skills that I don't have uh, in order to, like, figure out the full solution to the problem, right? Not just to solve the part of the problem that I know how, but to solve the full problem that I can see. Uh, and so that also requires a lot of empathy and communication to like make the team actually produce something more than what the individual members could. Uh, then the third step is to communicate that result back to the people who could actually use it and put it into practice. Uh, and for that, you know, that's part of the reason that I'm here at WIDS is to is to try to try to uh, show people the, the useful things that I think I've come up with. But I'm also really excited to talk to people here and understand what gnarly problems do they not know how to solve yet. There's a lot of gnarly problems out there. I love that you brought brought that <laughs> word up. But I'm just I'm curious before we go mm -hmm. further is understanding. Did you understand when you were studying mm -hmm. uh, mathematics, computational mm -hmm. engineering, data science, did you understand at that point of the other important skills of collaboration, of communication, or ha did you discover that along the way? And is that something that is taught today to those <laughs> students? Like These are the other things we want to develop in you. Yeah, I think we barely teach those skills. Really? Uh, I think at the, at the earliest level, there's a lot of focus on the technical skills, and it's hard to see the other skills that are going to enable you to get from 90 to 100%, but that 90 to 100% is the most important part. Right? If you can't communicate your results back, then, then it doesn't do so much good to have produced the results right. in the first place. Uh, but really, a lot of the education uh, right now at most universities is focused on the, the technical core. And you can see that in the way that we evaluate students, right? We evaluate them on their homeworks, which are supposed to be individual, on their test performance, right? Maybe there are projects, and the projects, I think, are much better at, at, at helping them develop these skills of communication and teamwork. Uh, uh, but that's you know not included in most courses because it's frankly hard to do. It's hard to um, teach students how to how to work on projects. It's hard to, hard to give them topics. It's hard to evaluate the results on the projects. It's hard to give them time to present it to a group. Uh, but I think these are critical skills, right? That project work is much more like what work becomes after you know after they finish their studies. Um, As you've been in the STEM fields for for quite a while mm -hmm. and gone so far in your academic career. Tell me about the changes that you've seen in the curriculum, and do you think that you're going to have a chance to influence mm -hmm. some of those other skills, communication? When I was in grad school studying biology, mm -hmm. communication a long time ago was actually part of it okay. for a semester, but I'm just wondering, do you think that this is something that a movement like WIDS could yeah. help inspire? I think it's important to help people see what the skills that they're going to need to use down the line. Uh, I think that sometimes, I, the thing is, I think that the technical foundation is really important, um, and I think that uh, doubling down on that, particularly when you're young and you can concentrate on the on the the nitty gritty details, I actually think that's something that becomes harder as you get older. Um, and so, focusing on that for people in their undergrad and early PhD, I, I think that actually makes sense. But you want them to see what the final result is, right? You want them to see like what is the career and how is that different from what they're doing right now. Uh, and so I think events like WIDS are really great for, um, for showcasing that. Um, but I would also like to sort of pull that forward, to pull that project work forward um, to the extent possible with the skills that uh, the students have at any point in their, in their curriculum. So in the class that I teach, particularly in Big Messy Data, uh, the, um, the capstone of the course is a class project where the stu students tackle a big messy data set that they find on their own, they define the problems, uh, and the form of what they're supposed to produce is, is uh, uh, supposed to be a report to their manager. Right to say, uh, you know, the the project proposal says, uh, uh, manager, this is why I should be allowed to work on this project for uh, the next month because it's so important. It's really going to drive growth in our business. It's going to open up you know, new markets, and it's you know, right. But they're supposed to describe it in, in industry terms, not just in academic terms, right? Then they they try to figure out actually how to solve the problem. And at the end, they're supposed to uh, 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 once again write a report that's describing uh, how what they found will help and impact the business. That element of persuasion That's is right. always key. That's right. So last thing here as we wrap up, this is the fourth annual Women mm -hmm. in Data Science Conference that I, I mentioned in the, in the opening. The impact and the expansion that they have been able to mm -hmm. drive in such a short period of time is, is something that I always love seeing every year. There's 150 plus regional events yeah. going on. They're expected to reach 100,000 people. What 
excites you about the opportunity that you have to present here at Stanford later today? I think it's amazing that there's so many people excited about WIDS. I mean, I can't travel to 150 locations, uh, uh, certainly not this year, not in uh, many, many years. So the ability to, uh, uh, to be in touch with so many people in so many different places is really exciting to me. Uh, I hope that they'll be in touch with me too. Uh, that direction is a little bit harder with, uh, with current technology, uh, but I want to learn from them as well as, as well as teaching them. Awesome. Well, Madeline, yeah. thank you so much for sharing some of your time with me this morning on theCUBE. We appreciate that and wish you good luck on your WIDS presentation this afternoon. It was really fun to talk with you. Thank you for having oh, me Oh, my pleasure. We want to thank you. You're watching theCUBE live from the fourth annual Women in Data Science Conference WIDS here at Stanford. I'm Lisa Martin. Stick around. I'll be right back after a break with my next guest.